We want to turn our attention to what's happening on Capitol Hill with the stimulus package pending $2 trillion. To help us understand how this could impact the economy is Nouriel Roubini. He's a professor of economics at the NYU's business school, the Stern School. And Nouriel, you were with us within the last 10 days, and you said it would be possible to avoid, you used the word depression, if the stimulus package was large enough. Do you still feel that's accurate? Well, at this point, uh, it's clear that we are going to have a recession that is more severe than the global financial crisis. Even the IMF, even uh, folks on Wall Street that uh, weeks ago were talking about a mild correction or a V-shaped recovery. Now, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley say in the second quarter, up is going to fall between 25 to 30 percent annualized. So we're already in a state in which this is going to be a very severe recession worse than the great financial crisis has been front loaded this has been actually so far worse even than the great depression because the free fall of output did not occur like in the previous episodes in three years but in three weeks the stock market the credit spreads the unemployment rate uh, credit market seizing employment economic activity consumption investment capex everything is in a free fall is not a v is not a u is not an l is an i is a straight one down so right now we are on the verge of something could be worse than the great uh, uh, financial crisis. There are conditions under which we could get into another greater depression. Now, the good news is that the central banks are doing everything necessary. Pretty much all the kitchen sink of policy tools that were used 10 years ago are being used again. Fiscal policy has been behind the curve. We'll see whether this package is passed but we need similar types of packages, not just in the United States, but also in Europe and other parts of the world. But I think that the key things for the market and for the economy is going to be to deal with this spread of the pandemics because markets are not going to stabilize. Today they're up because there'll be a fiscal deal. But if the news are going to be, as they've been for the last week, that the rate of spread of contagion is 30% per day, that means that every three days the number doubles. In a month from now we'll have half a million cases in the United States. And therefore, we're not going to be able to reopen economic activity. Economic activity is already worsening more than expected. Therefore, the economy can still tank. The market can go lower after the good news of today. And if that happens and the contagion is not stopped, then we'll have the condition for having a depression, not a recession. Noriel, it's Julia LaRoche here. So what I'm hearing from you is that the best case scenario is that short lived recession that you're referring to that we would get to growth in the fourth quarter but as you're referencing that ref that depends on that's contingent upon the kitchen sink of uh, federal monetary federal reserve monetary policy getting the virus under control getting the right fiscal stimulus so i'm wondering um because even that scenario doesn't sound so great the the depression scenario scenario that you lay out sounds really dire are we past the point of uh no return at, at this point we're not at, uh, past the point of no return. There'll be a great recession, more severe than the global financial crisis. That's consensus. You ask anybody now on Wall Street, they say this is going to be worse than 10 years ago. That's agreed. It was not a month ago, but now we're there. The question is, are we going to have a three-quarter severe recession worse than 10 years ago? And then by the fourth quarter, we have a recovery, or it's going to get worse? I think the condition and the things get worse are the falling one. First of all, if we don't do a full lockdown of the economy for a month or two, the way China did and the way Italy is doing right now, this thing is going to explode. So this idea of re reopening everything in a week after two weeks doesn't make any sense. Even in the UK, Boris Johnson decided we're going to shut down everything, lockdown fully and compulsory. We're not doing it, and that's dangerous. Even if we were to do that, by next winter, we know that this virus is going to mutate and we're not going to have a vaccine until another 18 months. And unless we find miracle antivirals or therapeutics going to work, every study scientifically suggests there's going to be a return of this infection under a different form mutated. So by the time we're supposed to recover in Q4, it'll be winter and we'll have another run of this thing, maybe less severe than this time around, but again. Uh, secondly, by that point, the stimulus is going to run out of steam. And for how long we can do budget deficits of 10% of GDP fully monetized by the central bank? We can do it for a year. Can we do it for two years in a row? At some point, given the supply shocks that imply there'll be less production, there'll be bottlenecks. If you monetize fiscal deficit, 
you're going to have stuck deflation, meaning recession and inflation at the same time, stagflation. That's a risk we're facing right now. And on top of everything else, there is a bunch of geopolitical risk, US and China. Uh, there is a collision course. There are a bunch of revisionist powers like China, Russia, uh, North Korea and Iran. They're going to be interfering in our election. We'll see what's going to happen with the election. There is a risk of rigged election and confusion and political chaos. And I would not even rule out that Iran is going to strike the United States by the middle of the year. They'll start a war in the Middle East because they need to have regime change in the US. If Trump stays in power, the regime is dead. So they're going to escalate conflict in the Middle East. So we have the combination of having a pandemic that might not be contained, running out of policy bullets, and having rising geopolitical risk that could lead to what I've called the greater depression rather than the greater recession. That's the risk we're facing right now. The greater recession was already baked in in the numbers and its consensus. The question is whether there are downside risk. I see downside risk compared to the baseline of a greater recession. Noriel, it's Julie here. Um, so we're talking about potential depression or a greater recession here in the US. Talk to me more about what a global recession or even depression could look like. Because in addition to the countries that you mentioned, yes, China coming back online slowly, but Italy shut down, Britain shut down. Now India talking about a 21 day lockdown for a nation of 1.3 billion people. Are we going to see a coordinated global depression? Well, what has happened this time around is usually when there is a recession in one country or one region of the world, there is economic growth in other parts of the world. This time around is as if an asteroid that hit planet Earth all at once, and you have a complete collapse of economic activity in US, in Europe, in Japan, in China, in Asia, in emerging markets, in advanced economies. We have not seen anything like this. And even China, where output collapsed at the rate of 40% in the first quarter is not going to recover in the second quarter because now the consensus is that in the US and Europe and other advanced economies, economic activity is going to collapse at the annual rate of 40% in the second quarter. So how can China recover when it's a major exporting country when the rest of the world is going to have a more severe recession in Q2 than Q1? So in Q1, China faced a negative supply shock in the Q2 quarter is going to face a massive demand shock, and that's going to exacerbate the global economic contraction. Now, we know everybody in the world will be a recession in Q1, in Q2, and it's going to spill over in Q3. The question is whether by Q4 you have a recovery or you end up into a depression. And I think the answer to that depends on whether we do the right policy action on the health side. We're not doing it in the United States. We're not doing it everywhere in Europe. That, I think, is the biggest risk, the idea that you're going to release the, uh, the rules about kind of social distancing in a week from now is totally crazy. I mean, look at what happened in Italy when they did it too little, too late, and now there is a nightmare. U.S. in a week from now or two weeks from now is going to be worse than Italy at this rate of increase of the spread of the contagion. So if we don't do the right health response because we want to jumpstart economic activity too soon, it's going to be a nightmare. And by next winter, it's going to be another round of this virus mutated. And we're going to run out of policy bullets because we cannot run 10% of GDP this year, next year, another year, let alone other geopolitical risks that are looming over the horizon. That's why I worry okay. about the greater depression, not the greater recession. The greater recession is baked in for the world. You have to start to worry about the greater depression. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.